Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and welcome to 67P, also known as Cherusimov Gerasimenko Comet. This is the comet we've landed on a few years ago, it was really really big news and I've talked about this previously because it was super exciting for humanity to have achieved something of this uh, proportion. But we also learned something by looking at this comet and it's something that's teaching us about the production of oxygen in space. Now, okay, let's talk a little bit more about this, but first, let's begin with the observation itself. Now, for the longest time, scientists, while looking at the comet, realized there was a lot of activity on the surface. But there was one specific type of activity that we couldn't really explain. We kept detecting molecular oxygen. You know, the kind of oxygen that we need to breathe. Not just a single atom of oxygen that's pretty much everywhere in the universe, the molecular oxygen that's kind of rare. And we seem to have seen tons of it coming out of the comet itself. And it was not easy to explain until relatively recently. We realized that as the uh, molecules of water were hitting the surface of the comet, they were actually breaking apart physically. And the O in water, because it's H2O, would then turn into the molecular oxygen that we were detecting. In other words, it was actually the velocity, the speed of the water molecule that was creating this oxygen that we were detecting. And this unusual detection um, actually inspired the scientists from Caltech to investigate if we could create oxygen from other molecules using this really interesting technique of high velocity collisions. In other words, let's say we take a really simple molecule that already has oxygen, like for example, CO2, carbon dioxide, and then try to collide it with something going really, really, really fast and see if we can produce any oxygen. And so this is exactly what the researchers from Caltech did. And this is exactly what their paper is about. They've used carbon dioxide and a kind of a gold-plated sheath, then used really, really fastly moving CO2 molecules, bombarded the gold um, with it, and saw the results. And as you can probably imagine, surprisingly, they were able to produce oxygen. Now, on the surface of comets, uh, when these molecules collide with the surface, usually they have to kind of react with something, or at least have some kind of a surface that will break them apart. In this case, on comets, usually it's either rust or sand or in some cases other complex molecules that cause the water to break apart physically, not chemically, physically. And um, for these researchers, they didn't really know what to pick for the surface, so they went with gold. And one of the first things they observed is that, well, it's definitely possible because when they collided CO2 with the gold sheath, oxygen was produced. But unfortunately, not a lot. Now, all of these molecules of CO2 were basically reshaped physically to convert into something else. And as you can see here, the vast majority of the molecules turn into the carbon monoxide with a single atom of oxygen that then probably combined with something else, like for example, metal to create rust. Some of them bounced back off and didn't change at all. Some of them um, changed the shape a little bit, but were not really eager to change into anything other than carbon monoxide. And in a lot of cases, all three atoms became separated. But there was a chance for this very unusually shaped atom to then break apart into molecular oxygen and a single atom of carbon. In total, it happened less than 1% of the time, or basically uh, 65 times out of 10,000 collisions. And it only happened uh, after the CO2 molecule turned into a kind of a triangular shape that you see right here. It happened only 5% of the time, and um, this is very likely due to the atoms of gold that you see here that uh, CO2 is colliding with, and because they're larger in size, they may have not really created perfect opportunities for collisions. So maybe by colliding CO2 with something shaped differently, they would have different results that would potentially create even more oxygen. But what is really important in this particular discovery is that the observations from 67P Comet allowed us to understand that we can technically create oxygen for various space missions, including missions to Mars, by not just bringing chemicals with us, but by accelerating molecules of CO2, or of course water, colliding them with different types of material that eventually we'll be able to find where it creates a lot of oxygen, 
and thus produce oxygen that we need for breathing by just doing that. We don't need any plants, we don't need any kind of chemicals, we just need fast-moving molecules. And all of this was thanks to this incredible mission that was launched by European Space Agency a few years ago that allowed us to explore the surface of the comet, learn its mysteries, and understand that there are a lot of different things happening out there in space that are really interesting, really complex, and that will teach us to be better explorers ourselves. And I'm sure with time we'll discover some other surface that we can use for collisions of CO2 to literally create tons of oxygen without any effort. For now though, um, this is the first such discovery, first um, attempt at creating oxygen, and with less than 1% produced, we would need a lot of energy to create a lot of oxygen. In the future though, our eventual goal is going to be to farm a lot of oxygen from our own breath, essentially, from CO2. And looks like we're already discovering new techniques that will allow us to create all of the necessary resources for human colonists by using things that are already there. And in some sense, this particular technique is even more efficient at creating oxygen than plants are, because technically, for a single person uh, to create enough oxygen, you would need approximately 500 smaller plants. That is a lot of plants. So, in that sense, this is actually really effective already. But, like I said, once we discover new material that is even better than gold, we'll probably be able to create all of the oxygen we need for future space missions. Until then, though, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. It's definitely a very incredible discovery, super cool technique, and if you want to learn more about it, check out the paper in the description below. On that note, though, so that's really it. This is 67P in Space Engine, very, very accurately recreated, very beautiful comet to visit. You can actually even land here and walk around and see the surface as we did with the beautiful Philae lander back a few years ago. Until we discover more, or until this technique is improved, that's really it. I'm going to uh, come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos, but for now, that's really all I wanted to say. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences and wants to know more about the universe in general, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.